Late Night with Johnny P show is pre-recorded in front of a live studio audience. Hey, this is Frank Vincent, and you're watching uh, Late Night with Johnny P show. And don't turn it off. So, you don't have a week to hang out with him. Here's an hour with Johnny P. Gentlemen, put your hands together, make some noise for your host this evening, Johnny P. Welcome to the Late Night with Johnny P Show. I am your host, Johnny Potenza, and this is actually season 10, our series finale, episode 117. How the hell are you? Yeah! I tell you, this audience is awesome. Last show we had, there were 15 people in here. That's how, you know, that's, that's how it goes. And I got a lot of great people here. I got, I got Aldo from New Jersey. I got my cousins, the Stacios over here. I got the original Uncle Junior. I got the real, my cousin Vinny's here. I got the Brunos in the audience. I mean, the McCoys are here. We got the Irish, the Italian, with the Jewish, the German. Any Chinese, any? No. <laughs> All right. They work too much, I guess. I don't know. So how's everybody doing? You enjoying the holidays, I guess? Yeah. All right, good, good, good. So uh, as you know, this is a uh, series finale. And uh, after 10 years, I need a break. And that's all it comes down to. And uh, I'm going to take a break. <laughs> It ain't like, I, you know, I'm not working for no pension over here, so uh, <laughs> what are you going to do? You deserve it. That's it. Yeah. What are you going to do? Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Sounds good. Sounds good. Now, listen, I got something really special from a friend of mine who's here. Uh, and you all got tickets? Yeah. yeah. This is like the Oprah Winfrey show, almost. <laughs> I wish I had her money. But, uh... I don't even know. <laughs> the funny part is, I had the winning person, I had the envelope, and I lost it. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? Listen, it doesn't even matter because I know the name. Okay, so, uh, and, and when I call the name up, you're going to come up, and later on, I'll give you the envelope. How's that? If we find it. <laughs> uh, Karen Golda, come on up here. Let's give her a hand. What's happening? Not much. Karen's a dear friend. She's also a past guest. How are you? How are you? She's also an actress. <laughs> now listen, you're, you're a homeowner, right? Yes. Now I got, I got a 5,000 gift certificate for you for free pavers from a friend of mine, Affordable Concrete. Are He's you serious? Sean McCusker. He's in the audience. <laughs> oh my God. So yeah. yeah. So what do you think, everybody? Yeah. Oh, here it is. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Affordable Concrete, yeah. $5,000. So you got the thing right here. Whatever you want to do with it. So if you want to make a porch for $2,500, maybe he'll make a deal, you know? <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> All right, Kevin Gold, everybody. Thank you. You got it. <laughs> yeah. And I got a bunch of my neighborhood friends here. Sean McCluskey, who you just, we, we call him Sean McCluskey. His name's Sean McCusker. Because he was like the general when we were growing up. And then you got Danny Bono in the audience. So uh, that's it, man. What else? 
I'm actually going to dedicate this show to cancer awareness because I'm sure everybody here, everybody here has somebody who uh, suffered cancer or passed away with cancer. I'm actually dealing with somebody that I really love so much that's going through cancer. I lost my father cancer, and it just sucks. You know what I mean? Even it just it is what it is. So uh, I want everybody just to bow their head and say, uh, "We'll do it our Father." How's that? I mean, this is something Johnny P never did before. But that's how much I believe in prayer. I need to uh, everybody to do this. We got to send God up something really big. You ready? Yeah. Okay. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not <coughs> into temptation, and deliver us from evil. Amen. All right, let's do it, baby. <laughs> All right, on with the show. Our first guest, he's hailing from New Jersey. We got comedian Rich Carucci. <laughs> he's a daredevil motorcycle jumper and stuntman. He's a good friend of mine. He's a legendary Ron Starr in the house. My special guest of tonight, he's a reality TV star, and he does a lot of other stuff. We'll talk to him after. You see him on Paco P.I. We got the one and only Vinny Paco in the house. Yeah. I feel the faith. <laughs> and for my uh, musical act tonight, the guys have been on the show before uh, in my second season in 2010, and they, and they really rock. They got the new album out called Electrified. We got Black Water Rising. Yeah. Now I got something really cool. While I'm getting ready and everybody's getting ready, I'm gonna show you a fast five minute clip of a bunch of my past, I asked everybody, a lot of people, and half the people don't even know how to use an iPhone, to send me a video <laughs> on wishing me good luck or whatever, blah, 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 actors, personalities, whatever. But whoever made it to the final cut, uh, you're gonna see, I think you're gonna enjoy it. Let's roll that clip, Kenny. Johnny P, the wise guy of rock and roll. Hey, congratulations on your great run on the show. And man, wishing you great success in the future. Give our best to Dougie and Johnny Feedback. Wait, hang on one second. I think we're getting a live feed from Hollywood. Johnny P, long time no see. Sorry I haven't been able to get back to New York and do your show, but I understand this is your, um, your series finale. I wish you the best of luck in uh, whatever happens next. And uh, I look forward to seeing you soon, my friend, next time I'm back on the East Coast. But good luck and uh, Merry Christmas. And uh, yeah, peace. Okay, see you, Johnny P. Congrats, buddy. Hey, Johnny P. It's Angelo Venuto here. Good luck to you in the future and God bless. Hey, Johnny P. Well wishes, brother, on your final show. You're the man. You're also an honorary orphan. This is Apache Ramos. Wishing you mad love. Happy holidays. Johnny P, what are we going to do to them warriors? We're going to rain on them warriors, baby. We're going to rain on them. Take care, my orphan brother, Johnny P. Staten Island's best. Johnny P, Artie Pasquale here. want to wish you the best in your last show. You've been a great friend, and you've helped a lot of people along the way. Hope to see you soon in good health. Freddie Rubino here, just want to wish Johnny P a Merry Christmas and congratulations on the season finale. You know, when Italians talk Christmas, we always think, you know, what fell off the back of the truck so I could get some nice Christmas presents? So Johnny P, save me some leather jackets, all right? Extra large, large, something in a suede. Uh, what a, I just want a little swag, all right? I'll swing by later this week, see if you got anything for the kids, too. Oh, Merry Christmas. See you later, pal. Hey, Johnny P. How are you? Gaetano Iacono here. I just want to wish you all the luck in the world on all your future endeavors. It was an honor being on your show a couple of times. It's bittersweet that the show is coming to an end, but I see nothing but bright, beautifully paved roads ahead for you, brother. I love you. God bless you. Thank you. Hey guys, Joe Cosby, Brooklyn Zone. I want to wish my good buddy, Johnny P of Late Night with Johnny P. Best of luck 
on his new series. Best of luck, happy holidays, Boda Natali, and everything else. It's Joe Causey from 101.1 CBS FM. Hey, Johnny P. So this is it, huh? This is a big night for you. I, unfortunately, buddy, I couldn't be there, but I did want to send along this uh, little thank you note. Uh, just wanted to thank you, first of all, for uh, always allowing me to come on your show and to plug my TV appearances or movies or plays, whatever I was doing. You're always there for me. You always picked up the phone and said, hey, what are you doing? Come on in and plug your stuff. And uh, I'll always be grateful for that. And I know everybody in the performing community here in New York would be grateful for that. You're one of the good ones, John. You gave everybody a shot, whether uh, you're on your way up or on your way down, as they say. You're always there for us. So uh, I just want to say congratulations on a great, great run. And uh, I am blessed to have you as a friend, as I can say, because you are a good friend. Upwards and onwards, Johnny P. Good luck to you, buddy. We'll see you soon. Hey, Johnny P. Paul Bergazi here. I really enjoyed doing your show the times that I did. And uh, I just wanted to wish you a very Merry Christmas, a Happy New Year, and lots of luck on your season finale. God bless you your whole crew, everybody who's ever been on the show, and uh, I'll see you in the movies. Hey Johnny, it's your old pal Sean Cannon coming from Southern California. How you doing, pal? Wow, the end of a 10-year run for the Late Night with Johnny P show. I mean, that's, that's absolutely incredible. And by that I mean incredible that you ever even got a show. I'm just kidding, man. Being on your show was a fantastic experience. You've got so many people that love you, that are followers of the show, and I know you're coming out with a new one in 2018. I can't wait to be on it. And I'm wishing you all the best. Right from the heart, pal. I love you. Hey, Johnny P. Wow. Ten years. That is awesome, my friend. It was great to be one of your entertainers on that show. I wish you the best of success. And uh, you are magical from Gemini. See you later, baby. Yo, Johnny P. What up, man? Freedom Williams in the building, brother. Wishing you well, man. You just called me up, man. I'm actually finishing up a job. Putting a closet in this room. Closet in this room with the light. You can see the light and running power there. So I'm doing some work, man. But I wish you well in your season finale. You know what I mean? Good dude. Good show. I'm going home, man. I'm tired, man. Just do floors. Just finish the floors. Crispy glass. Trying to be like you, Johnny. You know what I mean? The diminutive gangster. Freedom wins. Peace. Hey, Johnny P. Buddha the Comedian here. Listen, I just want to wish you congrats on your season finale, bro. I love you, man. I love your show. Thanks for letting me always be on. You know, it's always a good time. Yeah, don't worry about that. Actually, you know what? Let me get out of here, right? I got some paperwork I gotta take care of. You know what I'm saying? Hey, Johnny P. It's your buddy Jose Hernandez Jr. here from a secret disclosed set location. So it's the last hurrah, my brother. Listen, God bless, all the best. See you when you come back, bigger and stronger. Much love. Hey, look who it is. Hey, Johnny P. I heard it's the series finale of your final show of the Late Night with Johnny P show. I want to give you a congratulations, man. I've been around for a long time. But we don't like to look back, we like to look forward. So I've got a new uh, jingle for your new show. Here we go. The Late Night TV will never be the same without a Johnny P. But up late with Johnny Potenza, you'll see his own away history. I can't try to extricate your feelings of desire. So stay up tonight and watch, you'll see the all new Johnny P. Johnny Potenza. Stay up late with Johnny Potenza. Wally Kurtz from General Hospital. I love all those guys, man. Unbelievable. Now, first, a little... This is before we get into the show. I have to do this since it's the season finale. I want to thank all the people that are behind the scenes that have been working with me because 
if I didn't have them, there wouldn't be a show. Even though I'm like the butcher, the baker, and the candlestick maker, I'm not an octopus, you know? <laughs> so, I'm gonna name the staff and crew who lasted. Whoever lasted with me is a war. <laughs> hey, let's, let's call a spade a spade. It is what it is, uh, you know. I'm, I'm set in my ways and I want things the way I want them. And especially when you got no budget, you gotta, you gotta do this. So, but this is it. You know, people come and go, but these are the people that stayed. Uh, Multi-platinum recording artist. He's known from the 70s. He uh, recorded uh, Peter Frampton, John Lennon, Rick Devinger, and many others. He's retired. He came work with me nine years ago. We got Frankie D. Augustus, our pro sound guy. Let's hear my hand. One of my top camera guys who just came with me about three years ago, and, he, and, he, and I consider him my uncle, and, and, and he definitely helped my production a lot more and made my job a lot easier. We, he's my camera guy, and, and he's a stagehand, and, and he's a friend. We got Sal Marino in the audience. Yeah. A friend of mine, first time when I came in here in, in 1997 when I started my show, The Gangsters of Rock. Uh, Christine Chavon, she's like one of my oldest friends here, and uh, she's been with me, and uh, you know she used to bail me out of trouble back in the day. Now I now she doesn't have to do nothing but be my friend, and uh, she's here. And let's give it up for Christine Chavon. My public relations, come on, who in public access has the public relations? I always get my balls busted, but she's been with me for a long time since the Big Ann Show. So that's 2012 or before, Marla. Were you before? Okay, so let's give her eight. Let's give her eight years. We got Marla Weinstein in the audience. She takes all the heat for me, and she's very attractive, and she has a great personality, and she's also attorney by law. So I need a lawyer around me all the time. You know that. Uh, okay, R.I.P. to one of our past staff members, Frank Dudley, passed away a, a while ago. He was the best. He was my floor director. He was an actor and he was an unsung hero. And Louis Skowoski, who just passed away about a year ago, he was like our assistant sound guy. We used to call him Screwy Louis. He used to mess everything up, but then he'd fix it and then mess it up again. But, <laughs> but we loved this guy. He was like the comic relief. It was, you know, when people saw that who came to the audience, they would come to the next show and say, where's this guy Louis? He's hilarious. So we got, we got those two guys. So rest in peace in heaven, you guys. Frank. And Lewis, we got a newcomer to the show. He's just been with me probably, I don't know, six months. We got Charlie Olson. He's been a very good help. It seems like everybody on my staff that's over 45 does the best work. I don't understand. <laughs> but what are you going to do? It's all good. Uh, another guy I like to thank, he only works on the show sometimes because uh, we drive him crazy. But he's one of my dear friends. And he directs the show sometimes. And he's actually taught me how to do the, the digital editing back in the day. And anytime I need any kind of technical questions or my computer fix or my printer fix, uh, he would be there. And he's still here today because we're going to start learning the new programs in the new year. We got David Marcus in the audience. <laughs> uh, Bernadette Means, the camera lady, she's been with me a couple of years. Let's give her a hand. She's a school teacher. Bernadette texts me, I text her, she texts me back a week later. <laughs> You're lucky I don't got your home phone number. Okay, who else we got here? My director, my sergeant in arms, another guy I know for 20 years. And we got my man in the control room, did photography for me, and forget about it. Kenny Graham. Yeah. Also lighting, lighting engineer. Okay, I'm gonna wanna thank my, my, my two latest photographers that have been with me for a while. Uh, this, this one girl who's with us tonight, a photographer didn't show up when I did the NYB reunion after 10 years. You, 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 people who know me know how pissed I was that when I, the photographer didn't show up. Had this lady come up and say, well, you know what, I take pictures. And I go, yeah, you good? And she goes, yeah. I go, good, you're shooting tonight. <laughs> if, and she shot with an iPhone and she impressed the shit out of me. And, and she's here tonight, she's right there. Kathleen Gillahan's over here. And we got Joe Cavallo, does my headshots now. She's too big for Bridges to come shoot a slow budget <laughs> show. But she's good, I love you, Joe, you know that. You did a great, you did great work, so let's give it up for Joe. <laughs> We're almost done, don't worry. <laughs> uh, 
my intern, new intern, guy came up to me, a magician, a magician on my show, could have my son intern for you? I go, is he ready to join the army? And he goes, yep. I go, bring him aboard. And he's here, he's a gentleman. Let's give it up for Brandon Rose. He's the, he's the youngest staff member, and he's respected by everybody here. And, and I hope he comes on a long board with us on the next show. Uh, we have Mary Rizzo that no one met because she's not allowed out of the house because she has... Her husband's a little silly, and I'll say that. <laughs> but anyway, she does all my studio audience. If you get a thing with the studio audience, she handles. And if I have to call someone that I don't want to talk to, she does that for me. So, <laughs> Mary Rizzo. <laughs> uh, and then that's it. We got, you know, Darlene, and we got Eileen Hanley, who's here tonight. She's filming uh, the back, the back, uh, the behind the scenes footage, and Eileen helps me out a lot. She used to see me come and goes, oh, Johnny P is here. <laughs> She's actually a real sweet girl. I was just crazy back then. Yeah, but I'm certifiable now, so right. And uh, who else? Uh, and that's it. Everybody who works at CTV, I can't mention a million names because you don't work on my show. But I love CTV. This is my second home, and without CTV, there wouldn't be a Johnny P show. So Staten Island Community Television. Use it if you, and don't abuse it. And if you have a talent and you want to come down here, this is a good uh, a stepping stone. So let's give it up for Staten Island Community Television. <laughs> Before we start bringing everybody on, I got to bring up a special guest. Uh, he's a friend of mine. He's a great su supporter. He's been on the show before, but he's a real character, and he's actually a really nice guy. There's not many people like him no more. Uh, we're going to bring him up now. He's the creator of Friendship Lights. He's another Italian. Let's give it up for Jack Giabanco. <laughs> And we got Domini Monroe coming up with us. My man, what are you doing? What's going on? Right, we thought we'd stop Where by. does she come from? You tell me you were bringing on another guest. That's Yo -yo another, and Domini. That's another hundred dollars. <laughs> Jack, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing great, Johnny. Just wanted to come by and see you. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> We're with the wonderful, beautiful, charming, talented Domini Monroe. How are you? I'm now, who's this lovely young lady over here? I'm from, I'm from 80. Who? Paul Nigra. Okay. You speak I'm French? I'm from 80. <laughs> I'm an actress and model. I'm just teasing you. I couldn't understand you anyway. I'm sorry. <laughs> Johnny, they are part of my dream team. I know that. Why don't you, listen, why don't you tell everybody what... What are you doing here in the first place? What do I owe this honor your visit? Well, the reason I came, last time you had me on your Christmas show, I was very touched and honored, and you asked me about making special friendship lights for the Johnny P Show. Uh -huh. Back then, I couldn't do it, but now, as you can see, we have a special batch. Now, why don't you tell everybody first before you announce that to the world, to people that don't know in the audience, as people don't know, like my uncles are here and some other people, what is a friendship like? Well, I had a dream in 2012 of people from all nationalities and all walks of life united in peace, and they were holding these little lights. And the way it works is you pull the tab, the light goes on, and you make a wish. Uh -huh. And legend has it your wish will come true, just like mine did when I created them from a dream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're based on, on the law of attraction. So if you look at that light every day, thinking of your dream or desire in life, and do something a little bit each day. It's amazing when you look back to see how far you, you've come. And one of the reasons why I made this for you, Johnny, is you give me an opportunity and so many others an opportunity on this show. And uh, they're here for you, Johnny. So You make me know, blush. Let's show, let's show them these. <laughs> Let me uh, see these. Uh, yeah, I, I, think I, got, I, I, I saw them last night and I got embarrassed. I was like... Because <laughs> they look so good. <laughs> There's multiple of these. I was like, who is this guy? <laughs> they're, they're my most handsome friendship lights ever. People have been telling me if that. If you say so. This is, what, <laughs> this is me when I was about 15 pounds lighter, but that's all right. The face looks the same, I think. <laughs> that, what are you going to do with these? These are mine or not? Yeah, the way it works is we're going to oh, give them out. On. We're going to give them out to your audience, <laughs> and we're all going to pull the tab and make a wish for you today. No, a thousand percent. But listen, you gave me a blue one. I need one for my mother. <laughs> Because she's so proud of me. And one, and one for my old lady. Where, where's the other one? What was I she? have a black one that you wanted me to save for you, so I have that for you. Uh, so I'll give it to you after. Let me think. Uh, I don't know what the hell she likes. She, 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 give me yellow. Okay, that's cool. Thank you. All right, and great. the rest, uh, we'll give them out to the audience, and so we can all pull, pull it and make yes, a no, wish for you. you. Jack likes to pull it, so let's <laughs> do what we got to do. <laughs> I love to pull it, because then I can make my wish. That's so cool. when are you going to give them to the audience? I guess now. You better do it. Hurry up. Yeah. Uh, give him something real quick. It, Run. <laughs> so what's your next move? Well, I just keep on visiting hospitals and schools and spreading the good vibe. Well, good. That, that's a great thing. 
So now, what, when are you going to do this with the, with the light? How's it going to work? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to get my dream team back up here, and we're going to pull the tab and make a wish for you. And you're going to pull yours, and the audience is going to pull theirs on the count of three. Pull your tab How about really we do hard. this? How about we wish for everyone that got cancer? Yes. Yeah. That's a great idea, Johnny. Is that cool? So. Woo! Great idea. All right, so on the count of three, we're going to make a wish for somebody you might know with cancer, or if you don't know anybody with cancer, for just say it for anybody who has cancer out there, okay? On the count sure. of three? Yep. And uh, here we go. One, two, three. Pull that tab and make a wish. Beautiful. That's great, Jackie. Thank, Thank you for this man. opportunity, John. Listen. Listen, I love this. Woo! I really appreciate this. Then what's the next move before you guys? Uh... Uh, next move is me and the Dream Team just going out, visiting hospitals and doing things. And I just want to know, Johnny, is it true that this is your last show? It's my last show for late night, but I'm just going to take a break, like I said before. And then, okay. it depends. I'm looking to do the fall of 18 and come out with a new show up late with Johnny Potenza. Excellent. And if I'm wow. not ready, or I won't, I'm just going to, when I'm, when I'm ready, I'm going to come back. I don't want to take too long of a time. But uh, that, that's my plan. That's Nine awesome. months, is f don't go, it goes fast. Yeah, it goes, it goes quick. Well, so, we're looking forward to having you back. Well, so. listen, this is what you do. Just sit here. Okay. Let me finish a little bit of a conversation, and then we're going to bring up our All first right. guy. How's that? All right, cool. Yeah. High five, Right, guys. Domini? High, High five. five. <laughs> and I'm looking forward to your new CD when it comes out, all right? All right, good luck. And, and thank you for coming. I'm just teasing you. Don't be insulting. You're like, that Johnny P, I'm never coming back. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, it's all right. It's all good. Don't worry about it. All right, what else do I got here? A comedian, his name was Jeff Parami, but his nickname was Fat Rat Bastard. And that's what he goes by. But I got a call from him a couple days after the show, and I thought this guy was the most annoyingest guy in the world. I was like, I'm not going to have this guy on my show again. But he was great. He was funny, but he was a nut. But then he called me, he goes, Johnny, you want to come to the, uh, the Teddy Atlas, Teddy Atlas uh, Dinner Foundation? I go, Teddy Atlas? I go, ain't that the, the old boxing guy? He goes, yeah. He goes, it's $500 a ticket. I go, I go $500 a ticket. I go, it's Christmas time. I go, no, you jerk, you're coming. I'm going to give you two free tickets. I was like, okay, good. So he gave me two free tickets, and I'm calling this guy. I'm telling Michelle, I'm like, this guy was a really idiot. And I get the call. I'm like, you know what? This guy's a great guy. <laughs> <laughs> No, but he really is because he hooked me up with a lot of stuff. Uh, it was at the Hilton Hotel. It was hosted by uh, Jeff Pavami. They had a lot of guests there, such as Harry Carson from the New York Giants, Curtis Martin, from, formerly from the, the New York Jets. I actually got to hang out with Tony Danza, which I've been, I, yeah. I, I met him once before, but fast, but I got to actually hang out with him. And this is a fair story. We'll hang out, and he's talking. And uh, everyone's bothering this guy. So some guy came up to him and goes, can I have your autograph? He goes, I'm not really signing tonight. He goes, no, this is for my kid. He has a big book of pictures. He goes, okay, just for your kid. He goes, could you sign two more? And I go, did you hear the f guy? He said he just signed one thing. I go, now get out of here. And Tony Danza goes, that was good. He goes, this guy got some balls. So I go, yeah. And then that was it. I was in with Tony that night. <laughs> and then, then, yeah, yeah, that's a true story. Uh, who else was there? Five-time world boxing champion, Vinny Pazienza. Uh, Tony Sirico will play Paulie Walnuts. Burt Young from Rocky. Vinny, Vinny Pazienza goes, listen, you got to walk Burt Young to his uh, limo. I was like, okay. So we went out the wrong way, so we went up walking all around the Hilton Hotel, and Burt Young's like, where the f*** are we going? You getting me back to my limo? And I go, don't worry, you'll get there. And I, and I did a Rocky impersonation. He goes, kid, I heard that a million times. <laughs> And that was it. He was good. He gave me like a 20. He gave me $20. I was like, I don't want this. And I gave it back to him. So that's it. Let's bring on our first guest. What do you say? Yeah. Hailing from the East Coast, we got comedian Rich Carucci. Yeah. It's good to be here on Late Night with Johnny P. All right. And I'm guessing the P stands for perfect hair. Have you seen the guy? <laughs> My God, he looks beautiful. Uh, I'm celebrating a wonderful day for me today. Two days sober today, folks. Two days sober today. Yeah! No, 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 I'm still on drugs. Uh, <laughs> you can't quit everything at once. That's insane. But uh, you know you have a drinking problem when you take your kids to Disney on ice and you realize you're the only ones tailgating in the parking lot. That is... <laughs> Boy, I wish that was a joke. <laughs> Getting older, just turned 53. 53, yeah. yeah. I realized at this part of my life, I don't care about anything but cake. Anybody at that point? 
I just want cake. I'm at the age where I'm getting more injections than erections. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, boy, am I getting old. My 33rd high school reunion's next week. I can't wait. I was homeschooled, so it'd be good to see mom again. Always <laughs> wonder what happened to her. I'm much closer to my brother. I'm like, this with my brother. I love him. I was best man at his wedding. That's right. He married a trophy wife. Unfortunately, she was last place, but uh, <laughs> he told her she was eye candy. I said, she looks more like John Candy, but <laughs> that works for you. <laughs> Oh, Christ, what else is happening, my God? I don't know, man. Uh, I work, I work, I work a regular job. I'm actually broke. Anybody else? Anybody broke out there? Yeah. yeah. You really want to feel broke as a white guy? Go to the stripper bar. That's where you really feel broke. I was in one yesterday, you know, by accident, uh, <laughs> hanging out with this brother. He's like, watch this. I'm going to make it rain. I'll tell you right now, black dudes are cooler than white guys, and we'll never be that cool. He made it rain. I said, what's that? He showered the dancer with dollar bills. It was the coolest thing I ever saw. Then he looked at me. I said, dude, I can't even make it drizzle, all right? <laughs> Thank God I found some change in my pocket. I made it hail. That was the best. <laughs> now I can't go back there. But uh, do I have a regular job? I was actually late for work again today. My boss said, why were you late? I said, my car wouldn't start. He said, why not? I said, because I wasn't in it. And... Uh, <laughs> That's the whole joke, wasn't it? <laughs> Thank you. I'm actually a 911 operator. 911 operator is my day job. 25 years in Burger County, New Jersey, folks. That's right. Yeah, don't clap. I'm supposed to be there right now. Uh, <laughs> as far as they know, I'm sick. Uh, I hate every moment of it. Every time that phone rings, it's like, I can't breathe. My leg's broken. My house is on fire. Not once does anyone ask how my day's going. It's always me, 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 help me. Well, I'm on break, Psh, just once. Uh, what else is happening? I don't know, man. Everybody's trying to be fit nowadays, be fit, be uh, in shape. I'm not a gym person. Shocking news. Take a look at me. I look like the love child of Governor Christian Don Rickles. I know that. <laughs> I use it to my advantage. Uh, I'm not a gym person. Somebody told me I should take up hunting. Should take up hunting. Any hunters out there, hunters? I took up hunting. Last week, I shot my first elk. You should have saw the rest of the lodge members run. Holy shit. <laughs> Who knew old people could move that fast? <laughs> they called it murder. I called it thinning the herd. But uh, I did what everyone that really doesn't want to get in shape did. I joined Planet Fitness. Anybody been to Planet Fitness? <laughs> I'll tell you right now, I'm eye candy in that joint, all right? <laughs> they got me with Pizza Tuesday. That's how they got me. <laughs> I innocently walked in the joint up on a Tuesday, and it was pizza everywhere. I said, is it somebody's birthday? They said, no, every Tuesday at Planet Fitness. All the pizza you want for 10 bucks? Shit, I'm in. <laughs> and that's the only day I go. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> you will not catch me there Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday. I go to the one in Patterson, New Jersey, because that's where I'm from, Patterson, New Jersey. I don't know if you've been to Patterson, New Jersey. There's so many Middle Easterners in this place, it looks like an Al-Qaeda training camp, I swear to God. <laughs> I'm like, should we be letting these people get faster? I don't think so. And I'm not prejudiced. I just remember the good old days. The only time I saw a guy wearing a turban, he was there to grant you three wishes. Remember those days? <laughs> you have to be afraid. It was Babu, not Baboom. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Planet Fitness, they got buckets of Tootsie Rolls in this place. Not bowls, buckets, all right? One grape, one chocolate. I joined last January 1st. I'm up 35 pounds, folks. That's right. <laughs> Moving in the wrong direction. I got kids, too. I got kids. They're out in the car. <laughs> They're outdoor kids. You bring them inside, they're no good for hunting no more. But the... My son's school called me the other day, bad phone call. They told me they think my son has a learning disability. They want him to take a test. The test cost $14,000. <laughs> right, it isn't covered by my insurance. I said, $14,000? You must think we're both idiots, all right? Because <laughs> for $14,000, I'll get new kids. How's that? Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Guidance Counselor, you didn't see that one. You're on my Amazon. You pick out the color and everything. They bring them with a drone. It's awesome. <laughs> My son's 18, he's in the 10th grade. Feel my pain, folks. 18, <laughs> he's in the 10th grade. That's why he's in the car. He can't find his way out, all right? He's 18, he's in the 10th grade. If I mention it to him, he goes, Dad, why are you busting my chops? There's people older than me in school. I said, those are teachers, you idiot, all right? <laughs> paid to be there. You're a moron, all right? 
I like high school. No shit, you're bigger than the principal. You come and go as you please. The only reason they keep doing this is when the bus driver calls in sick, he drives the other kids. <laughs> if the time comes that he ever graduates, at that point he'll have tenure, I swear to Christ. I go, to him, listen, it's never going to work out. I love you. You're my boy. We're going to do this together. High school's not for everybody. Don't worry about it. So I sign him up for his GD training, GD test, job training, job placement. I'm excited for him. New start. We're going to do this together. His first day doesn't show. <laughs> doesn't show. They call me up, Mr. Cruz, you know where your son is? He didn't show up today. I have no idea where this kid could be. Comes walking in an hour later. I go, what happened? We were going to start a new life today. He goes, ah, I was going to go. Then I figured I'd keep my options open. I said, you have options? I got to hear this. He's going, I'm thinking of joining the military. I said, you couldn't get in ISIS right now, you idiot. <laughs> football season's upon us. Where's my football fans? Love football. I'm a Jet fan. Oh, how crappy is that, right? Best thing about being a Jet fan, our season starts and ends the same day every year. You don't even have to buy memorabilia if you're a Jet fan. Wait till week three, pick anything you want out of the garbage. That's what you do. <laughs> I'm suffering from post-traumatic jet syndrome. That's what I'm <laughs> suffering from. They win a game, they suck you in. You bet on them, they lose. You bet against them, they win. There's no winning with them, right? <laughs> Swear to God. And I don't care who wins the Super Bowl every year as long as it's not the Giants. Because if the Giants win, I got to hear it all year long. See, that, that's a Super Bowl team. You're a Jet fan. You'll never have that. See, that's a Super Bowl parade. As a Jet fan, you'll never have Right, we'll never have that. The best we do is convince ourselves the St. Patrick's Day parade is for us, right? <laughs> That's how it'd be. Everybody dressed in green, kicking the shit out of each other. I love Italians. I love this audience. I love. Looks like. I feel like somebody made parole yesterday, and you all showed up today. But the, I love Italians. Without Italians, we'd have cool things like Italian bread. We wouldn't have Italian bread. We wouldn't have the wife beater T-shirt without Italians, right? That's their uniform. Without the Sopranos, who loves the Sopranos? Come on. I'm an Italian from New Jersey. I'm still in mourning James Gandolfini passed away. Had a heart attack and died in Italy, but learn this. If you have any kind of medical emergency, have it in this country, all right? I don't know what the medical care is like in Italy. I just picture some guy dressed like Chef Boyardee <laughs> holding a wooden spoon, poking you. <laughs> God, he's a dad. I don't know. He's a dad. <laughs> I got to go stir the sauce. <laughs> any, any Jewish people here? Jewish people? Jewish people? They never want to identify themselves in public. They, <laughs> especially if they got the history channel, they see where that shit went bad. But uh, I love Jewish people. Jewish people and Italian people have a lot in common. I don't know if you know this. If a Jewish person dies, they got to be buried in 24 hours for religious reasons. And if an Italian dies, they got to be buried in 24 hours because that's when the cops start looking for him. <laughs> the detective knows. Have the whole dog. <laughs> married people, married people. Yeah, all right. I would have been married 14 years next month, 14 years next month. My wife told me she wanted a divorce. I said, good, I didn't know what to get you anyway. So uh, <laughs> this is, uh, I know what not to get her. No matter how drunk you are, the thigh master is never a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And never anything from an army surplus store. That one made her cry. <laughs> <laughs> but I did tell you about my son and his struggles. It has a happy ending. My son's story, though, he got a job in the liquor store across the street from our house. So we'll be seeing more of each other, and uh, <laughs> hopefully this will make up for a little league. <laughs> 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 and my wife leaving me is no big deal. It's my third marriage. If you've been married more than twice, you don't expect much from it, right? So I got it, and I got nothing left to give. She's like, I'm taking a car. Good, it's a lease. I'm taking the furniture. We rented it. I said, now get those kids to get out of our house. She said, those are your kids from your last marriage. You're keeping them. <laughs> I'm not that smart, though. At one time or another, I had each one of my wives' names tattooed on me. And I wish this was a joke, too. My first wife's name is Susan. I have it tattooed up here. We split up. I put a star in the S, star in the N. It says USA. <laughs> my second wife's name was Denise. I have it tattooed here. Now it says Daddy. <laughs> my third wife was Chris, C-H-R-I-S. I have it on my back. Now that we split up, I'll could have put a T. It'll say Christ, right? <laughs> I'm running out of luck. My next wife's going to be like, Shaniqua. Why does it say chitty chitty bang bang on your chest? <laughs> so I love that movie. <laughs> Listen, I'll tell you right now, if you're saving money for a rainy day, spend it, okay? If you're going to put your kids through college, they're not going. Spend that money, okay? <laughs> Max out your credit cards. Have unprotected sex. Trump's president. North Korea has the bomb. It's all over, folks, all right? <laughs> it is.
all over. Enjoy yourself. I love people that were voting for Trump. They said, don't take what he says figuratively. He doesn't mean it. He gets voted in. He goes, no, I mean it. <laughs> I mean every crazy, nutty thing I ever said. We're going to build a wall between here and Mexico. A huge, giant, fantastic wall. It's going to be big. It's going to be huge. It's going to be fantastic. And I'm thinking to myself, has he seen the size of the average Mexican? It doesn't have to be that big. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> all right, folks, my name is Rich Crucci. God bless you. Thank you for letting me entertain you. Yeah. Funny guy. It did near you. But my next guest up tonight, I'm not going to announce his name yet. I want to, uh, I got a video of this guy from back in the day. Just to show you what he's all about. And then when he comes on, we'll hear what he has to say. So, uh, control room. Let's roll that footage. If tomorrow all the things were gone, I worked for all my life. And I had to start again with just my children and my wife. I thank my lucky stars to be living here today Cause the flag still stands for freedom And they can't take that away And I'm proud to be an American Where at least I know I'm free And I won't forget the man Next up is a former motorcycle daredevil and stuntman and one of my good friends. There's a guy like that has to be a friend of mine because he's crazy. Let's give it up for the one and only Ron Starr. <laughs> Ronnie. Good to see you, John. Good to see you, brother. Good to be here with you. You look great, pal. Likewise. How you doing, man? Hanging in there. Good. I'm very proud of you, John. You uh, <laughs> seem to have taken over show business. There, yeah, we're taking over show business. You see my bank account. You've been doing this a long time. Give us your story. Well, I probably started in about 1968. I used to go out into my backyard and climb up into the trees and swing upside down. And then I probably got into watching a lot of Evil Knievel. He was the best, right? He was one of my idols. Me, I love him. And then I knew that I was going to just try to follow in his footsteps. Now, when, when did you get your first motorcycle? Oh, probably 1976. Oh, yeah? yeah? I got one in 70. When did I get it? I got, when we moved to Staten Island, I got one in 79. My father bought it for me. He says, if you get in trouble by the cops, I'm going to sell it. I got caught by the cops, and he <laughs> sold it. <laughs> and that was that. <laughs> well, that's better than what, what happened to me. I got about four of my bikes confiscated no by way. the police department. Absolutely. Really? Oh, yeah. Yeah, but sure. as time went on, you, everyone loved you. They, they let you do anything. Well, we had a little cat and mouse, you know, <laughs> <laughs> little relationship with the police department. That's hilarious. Like some of them hated me, some of them liked me. Now that was, yeah, but you did a lot of great stuff. Now, now w when did you start jumping and, and getting into all that stuff? Um, out of high school, 1985, I started to really do the big ramp jumps. Mm -hmm. And then about 1987, I started to appear at Englishtown Raceway Park. 
And that's when I started to do the, the big jumps. And then all of a sudden, you started like you were like a, uh, I was just gonna say social media. And that, that wasn't then. You were like a, a media sensation back then, locally. You were always on the news. Everybody remember <laughs> Joe Franklin. He was on the Joe Franklin show. What year was that? 1988. And, yeah, and that's when Joe Franklin was hot. Correct. Uh, yeah. That was Channel 9. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I, Joe Franklin was sitting exactly where you were sitting. I love Joe yeah, Franklin. He was a friend of mine too. But when I saw that, I, you knew him a lot bef way before I knew him. I but you, you, you were lucky to meet him when he was that young. The first time I met him, I met him outside, and I got into a cab with him, and he wouldn't talk at all. He didn't look at me. He goes, "So he goes, you're a daredevil, huh?" And I said, "Yes, Mr. Franklin, I do uh, motorcycle stunts." And he goes, "That's good, kid. He goes, it's gonna look good on the show." He never looked at me at all, not one bit. Really? But then we, you know, yeah. became friends after that. Now, you used to tell everybody you used to light yourself on fire and stuff like that. Talk about that. Well, that was a lot of testing. What, were you hot? Were that. you cold? <laughs> no, that was actually at English Town Raceway Park that I first did it. And the announcer actually cursed for the first time in front of 30,000 people. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to repeat what he said, but he said, holy, you know, because he didn't expect me to do that. Mm -hmm. And he was very surprised. But we had it down to a good science, and uh, it went pretty smooth. One of the fire extinguishers didn't work, but as a professional, I had two others standing by. <laughs> Crazy like that. I think that I kind of incorporated everything into the motorcycle you know, mm -hmm. you know, scene, because I was once a speed skater. Yes. And then I was able to do tight roping to improve my balance. Mm -hmm. So I kind of mixed it all up, and I used to do it all. Now, what was the most cars you ever jump? I jumped over 20 cars. Yeah, that's sick. Did yeah. you have the Evil Knievel thing? Yes. I had that thing. I still have it. Oh, yeah. That was, <laughs> that was one of the best toys ever. I think my father took that away from me, too. I don't know. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Crazy stuff. Absolutely. Now, uh, let's get into a minute and reminisce. How did we, you, tell everybody how we met. Okay, I think it was at, was it, was, uh, was Midland Beach, it possibly? Was, no, actually, it was at, uh, wait a minute. Where the heck was it? Which beach? The one, the Great Kills Beach. Yeah, Midland, Gateway Beach. It was Gateway. You were actually performing, and I was just showed up with my camera. Mm -hmm. so, NYB was there. NYB. So uh, you said to me, what are you filming for? I said, eh, I'm just getting a little bit of extra, you know, a little bit of footage. And uh, you go, you know what my band's name is? And I says, no. I said, what is it? And you said, NYB. And I said, oh, okay. And you go, you know what it stands for? I says, not really. And you go, none of your business. <laughs> so I actually looked at him, I says, okay. If that's, you know, I'm not gonna argue with him. I, you know, I'm, not, I'm here to film him. And, uh, and that was it. And then right after that, me and John just became yeah. good friends because I think that, you know, we have a few things in common. Now, once I went over his house and I saw all the stuff there, and <laughs> I always, I, didn't, I knew who Von Starr was, but I didn't know who Von Starr, I didn't know I was talking to the guy who was jumping over everything. And, uh, and then he's a f fabulous photographer. His father was a, is a professional photographer. He still does developing black and whites. He did most of my NYB promo shots. All the album album shots he did, he used to come and, and film all our shows, and he did a great job. Uh, you know, the Brunos in the audience, Sam Goody, he was filming us there that night. Monty, was yep. you were there, Correct. and you've been with us ever since. And you were you were always been a great friend. And uh, then we started the Gangsters of Rock. You remember? Correct. And tell him that. Well, you had to ask me to host the show, so I had started to host all the shows. What did I do? Like maybe seven or eight? Yeah. And then after like the ninth one, what was the word in the green room you said to me? You what threw did me I... to the wolves. I had to, I had to throw you to the, no, actually I said, you know what, John, I know that you can do this on your own. And that's why I stood there and I watched this. And before anybody was here, I was with John. Yeah. And I was very, very proud to see John's accomplishments on what he transformed the show into. And to me, I feel it was a little piece of me no, you definitely that helped me, helped you with that. When I did the Gangster Rock, I came into CTV in uh, 97 just to learn film editing, but my main goal was to, to learn film editing to air my band. Right. And then when I was doing that, and I saw you do stuff, so I go, why don't you host a show, I'll produce it, and I'll get the bands. And then, we, then you would bring me in and interview me. 
But then I could never, I, and I had to get a girl to work with me. I was never secu mentally secure enough to, I was always a drummer in the background, you know, so to be in the front of the camera and talk and be memorized, it wasn't me. It took me a long time, even like after that, I could never do this by myself. I, I did this late night with a co-host because I felt comfortable with a co-host. I could lean on them if I forgot, they could carry me. And then when I didn't want to work with a co-host anymore, I just got, I just had to do it. And then it took me a while. Now I'm comfortable doing it. But you definitely had a big part of, of kicking me in the butt and because and you, you knew where I had to go, I guess. Without a doubt. And everyone who has their own show has to have their own style. And your style is unique. You know, you have your own way of doing things and you make it fun. And uh, I'm proud to be here, John. And I'm very proud of your, you know, accomplishment tonight. I appreciate tonight. that, Ryan. Wish you uh, great success in 2018. Listen, especially a guy like you, you're... When you were active, Ronnie was a role model. A lot of kids, you had you had baseball cards and playing cards, and and you, and you have a lot of stuff. For people that don't know, you make a lot of you just patent in a, a, a toy robot, and he makes a, a lot of stuff by hands. He's really amazing. But I definitely like to bring you on the new show when we do it back Absolutely. in eighteen. And, and I want to. We got to get back together now and start doing some more projects. You know, without a doubt. Right? Like I haven't seen Ronnie in a couple of years, but it's just like when you care about somebody, you see them. It's just like you just saw them. <laughs> Absolutely. Right or wrong? Without a doubt. Everybody, Ron Starr. Yeah. Yeah. Ron Starr. A great guy. But my next guest up tonight, he's a reality TV sh star. And you've seen him years ago on Parco PI. And he's here with me tonight. Let's give it up for Vinnie Parco. <laughs> Vinny. How are you, buddy? I'm great. I'm great. I'm so excited about being here. Listen, I'm, I'm, yesterday I, I, I go home and I see a package for me. It's six magazines. They wrote an article about me. Oh, so really? It's been a very good week. Ma magazine, you, what else can I that ask wouldn't, for? That wouldn't have to be Talent Raiders, is it or no? Or is this no, another one? No, that's another one, Audrey. This well, is we, a... got, we got Joseph Bennett in the audience from Talent Raiders. He's right there. Let's give him a hand. Good weapon. <laughs> this is awesome. It's a glossy magazine, yeah, well. Who, who's the lady on the cover? I don't know, I don't know her yet. I thought that was your, your, your Guma or something, no, I, I don't know. Guma's on the last page. Let me see. <laughs> All right. <laughs> now listen, last time you were here, speaking to Joe Franklin, it's, it's crazy connection. Oh, I've connection. been on his show like 10 times. Yeah, but you were here for the, when I did the Remember yeah, and that Joe was Franklin very show. very nice, that was nice to be here. I really enjoyed well, it. Well, Joe said a lot of good things about you. Frank Marino's the one who recommends you yeah. to, to come down yeah. here. That was on, what the hell, was the, what, the, what the, oh yeah. Uh, June 25th, 15. Wow. So you know, two years ago, yeah, yeah, yeah. Half of it. yeah. So you're here now. Yeah. So what's going on, man? What's well, going I, I, you know, I'm always getting invited to to do new TV show, new uh, reality shows, mm -hmm. detective shows. What else? I'm not going to play a rabbi, you know. No. I mean, I'm going to play, you know, detective. <laughs> but um, um, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. Sometimes they they they, they make you go and do all these uh, uh, test shots, and then nothing happens. Mm -hmm. But I'm doing a lot of guest shots. I was on um, the show. It's a New Jersey show. Uh, called Untied a Knot okay. with Vicki Ziegler, an, a, an attorney that I know very well. And uh, I had to go on the show and uh, find the assets of a Qatar manufacturer mm -hmm. whose wife was divorcing him in California. So it's about, you know, 50-50 oh, split. And she got like 20%. But, <laughs> but um, uh, it was nice. You know, it was good. And I get, I, get, I get calls to go on different TV shows to talk about my expertise in investigations, which I enjoy. And uh, life is good. I'm Ooh. doing a, a couple. Um, I got a guy that's uh, a good friend of mine, Gary Baumgarten, and we're going to be doing reality shows on YouTube, but okay. live. We're actually going to go out and do cases live. Now, Legit cases, or they're going to be uh, real, scripted? Good, real cases. But what happens is most reality shows is docudramas. Mm -hmm. You can't investigate a guy and videotape and say, oh, he's going to come out at 5 o'clock. No, no, he's not going to come out at 5 o'clock. So you have to have an actor, you have to have a reenactment and stuff like that. But we're going to try something a little different. Um, we've been getting a lot of cases of, of um, uh, child custody, mm -hmm. uh, both men and women. You know, sometimes the guy wants the kids and the wife is hiding. So we get these from the Actually, we get them from the city. Mm -hmm. The city hires us. They don't pay a lot of money, but it's... It pays the, the lights. Yeah, okay? exactly. But we're going to do it for the people that don't want to be on in the courtroom, but they want to just get it done. And um, so we're going to we're going to try it. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be hard, but interesting. 
but uh, people that don't know you, you've been a private artist. Did that your job? How long have you been in the business for? I don't know how old I am now. Uh, 37 years. That's sick. I started when I was two years old. God bless you. Okay. <laughs> right. I started young. Parker, Italian? Uh, very Italian. So Calabrese. So he's like the Italian Kojak, right? <laughs> <laughs> right? Now. Well, yeah. yeah. No, he didn't have a mustache, but that's okay. You're better looking. By the way, I started on the job when Kojak was on the air. I started with the state of New York as an investigator in 1974, and Kojak started. And then when the show was off the air, I quit my job with the, with the government. So I had like seven years on the job, and Kojak was on TV for seven years. And I watched the show every night. I didn't miss a show. I would love the show. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I like what I do. I enjoy the business. It's yeah, crazy. It's, I, you got to be nuts to be in my business. I'm writing a new book. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. I was going to ask you. You got a new book you're writing. It's called Rogue PR. <laughs> and uh, it's about some of the things, cases I had. Ripped from the headline. All the cases I'm writing about are cases that have been in the newspapers, mm -hmm. on TV, magazines, and were featured in them. Uh -huh. And um, what's interesting about it is I don't need permission because they've been in public eye. Yeah. So I could just use it. Public but knowledge. Public knowledge, public domain. But some of the things um, I'm writing about, behind the scenes things, I have to get permission from the people. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've already got permission from most of the people. And uh, I figured it'll be out in 2018 sometime. Well, that's big. I mean, and, you, and you, you're in the works of this new reality show, you said. Yeah. Don't forget, keep me in mind. I always want to do, like, Starsky and Hush stuff. Deuce of Hazzards. You want to you, yeah. you be Huggy Bear. <laughs> what, listen. But, uh, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very interested in all the things I do. I, I, it's just, I got to keep going. Like, a shark has to swim, I have mm -hmm. to keep working. You now, you're in Manhattan. You've been out there. That's where you're stationed? I'm in Manhattan almost entirely. Mm -hmm. But I also have a little office in Florida, so I work okay. out of Florida sometimes. All right. And, uh, and just enjoy, you know, enjoy life, you know. Yeah, that's great, man. You know, Joe Franklin always said a lot of good things about you. Joe Franklin, I gotta, can I tell you a quick story about yeah, that? Yeah, sure. He would always have these young girls, <laughs> the interns, and then he'd say, Vinny, do me a favor, can you find my niece? He had a lot of nieces, I'm yeah. going to tell you. And then he would say, Vinny, you know, I don't have, I, I would charge him like 50 bucks, 60, you know, hundreds, 50 bucks. Oh, okay, you know. And we would find these girls, and I don't know what he did with them. I tell you the truth, but he—he he was a, a little bit of a ladies' man. Yeah, but Joe Franklin—he was, he he was wasn't harmless. like—he uh, was harmless, you know. He wasn't like Clark Gable, but I mean, you know. <laughs> but Joe Franklin was—I—I I, I wasn't a Joe Franklin fan till years later. I'm on the show with a couple of the girls I work because I always have these beautiful girls working for me. You know, it's kind of a thing that I do, you mm -hmm. know. And uh, we're over there, and I see this guy. He's a singer. He's going on. A couple of days later, I get a call from somebody who wanted to investigate the guy's wife. The wife was the agent for the singer on the show. Oh, no way. I mean, you talk about a small world. But I had a lot of fun on his show. Uh, one day, he said, I'm going to do a show only about you. And he did it. I get on the show. They send him a limousine. I go, go over there. And he's got four of his friends, nice guys, uh, Vinnie Orenstein and a couple yeah. of other guys. And uh, they're asking me questions. And, the, and then, are there any other guests? No, you're the only guest. It was nice. It was very nice. He, whenever he said he's going to do something, he did it. I was I was flicking through the channels the other day, and I saw you on the, uh, when was it, on uh, Vinny Vella? Yeah, Vinny Vella. When yeah, was that? Oh, I've been on his show a few times. He's, he's, I love him. He's a, he's a you great You've got to have a show with Vinny Vella, Vinny Pastore, and Vinny Parker, all the Vinnies. <laughs> you have a Vinny show. I remember when they were fighting, and I had, Vinny Vella was like the first like semi-name that I had back in 2010. He goes, the only way I'm going to come on if I can start busting on Vinny Pastore. And I didn't know Vinny Pastore at the time yet. I go, I'm not like a Howard Stern type of show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I go, it, you know, I, it ain't like, I, I'm a major ball buster on the outside, but I'm not going to promote a war between the talent because yeah. that's just not good business. I didn't want to do it. And then the same thing with, with a couple other guys wanted to do the same thing, I, and I said no. One guy slipped, and I just edited it out, you know? Well, Vinny Vella, I met him while I had my show, Parco P.I. And I met him at Brunelli's. Remember Brunelli's? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm at Brunelli's. He goes, uh, can I get a job on your show? <laughs> I just got fired. <laughs> he got killed off The Sopranos. Yeah. But uh, he's a great guy. He's, he's a great guy. I, I love him. I love no, Vinny, him. Vinny's just uh, one of the stand-up guys. So now, listen, where can people find you on social media? They got to find well, you. Well, I got um, I got a Vinny, a Vinny Parco uh, page on Facebook. Well, Vinny, listen, it's always a pleasure talking to My you, man. My pleasure. Listen, and I, I hope to see you when you have your new show. You're definitely going to be, because by that time, hopefully, your, your reality show, your book will be out. Book will be out, and uh, hopefully this, uh, this other thing I'm doing will come out, too. Vinny Parco, everybody. Vinnie Paco P.I.
What a guy. Now, my featured musical act tonight, they just came out with a new CD. It's called Electrified. They've been on the show before. Let's give them a late night welcome for Black Water Rising. Original rock band Blackwater Rising, and we got the boys right here. Rob, what's up, pal? Good what's to up, see fellas? You, what's going on? Good Good on in. Yeah. It's been a long time, man. Uh, a few years. Eight yeah. years you guys have been here since. What, what, what do we got here? Oh, okay. I'm a bit of nostalgia guy. May 21st, 10, you were here. Wow. wow. Yeah, it's all wow. good, right? It's all right, still alive. It's still alive, man. A couple <laughs> pounds. We got a couple more pounds. It's, it's yeah. about the drumming, it looks like you, you didn't gain no weight. No. <laughs> <laughs> Got, got a little more gray, but that's it. <laughs> you can eat, too. <laughs> so, 
So what's going on? The new album. Talk to us. Uh, just came out Good about a month ago. Good for you, man. And, uh, yeah, we're very, very excited about it. And uh, we have a great new video that just came out for uh, the first single, Payback, uh -huh. directed by uh, Noah Shulman. He did an awesome job. The video is getting great feedback. And, uh, and we got one of our know. friends, one of my former late night guests and actor, and he's on the show. He's in the US. Jose Hernandez is here. Jose. Let's give it up. Jose, stand up for me to see you, man. From the TV show Oz. Yep. Yeah, he's yep. the star of the video. Yeah, man. You know, I was watching. When I was watching, I was like, that guy looks familiar. <laughs> and, and then I, and I saw in the credits, I go, and it's Jose. And that was it. And then I got a, a message from him two days later. And he told me he was going to come, and that's that. Yep. So what's did a great job. Great yeah. job. Uh, introduce yourselves so everybody know who you guys are. I'm Rob, the vocalist. Uh, Odie, bass. Mike, drums, Dennis, guitar. All original? All original. I know, that's great. Yeah. That's it. Listen, for people who don't know, having an, uh, not, a, not having a major band, even having a major band, just to keep all the original members for more than a couple of years is a, is a job itself. So right. You guys are blessed. Well, <coughs> the original guitar player we played with on the on the show when we played. Oh, yeah, you're new? So why yeah. do you yeah. say you? Like eight, eight years. You oh. fooled yeah. me. Yeah. Well, eight years are still good. Uh, yeah, we thought you meant all original music. All original music. music. Yeah, yeah, we don't do. Yeah. <laughs> Only with you, Johnny. We'll, we'll so, veer uh, off the path. Okay. I had all original guys for 10 years. That's good. But my guitar player was in and out of rehab a bunch of times. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and we had different fill ins. But <laughs> so just one change in the. Years. But that's still good. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's very good. Yeah. Well, we we yeah. gel. I mean, there's a chemistry. You, you know, usually you know you could be in bands with people. If there's no chemistry, they usually don't last. Okay. So the fact you know we've been together for almost ten years now, the band. You know, we all get along. There's chemistry. So it's now listen, important. tonight was a, lo uh, a long night, long show because of the special. Uh, so where are you gonna be playing? Where can people find you on social media? Uh. Well, Anywhere, you know, just Google the name. I mean, we're all over. We're on Facebook, we're on all the typical anything uh, coming outlets. Up, anything coming up now? Uh, we're working on some tours. We're, we're entertaining some opportunities, and uh, we should definitely be going out in the new year Good. doing something. And okay. uh, right now, like I said, we just finished up a video, so we're pushing that out there. And uh, I wish you guys all the best, man. You're part of my late night family. It's yeah, a three-ring circus over here. <laughs> Hope you guys cool. put out it's another really record. Cool. By the time I do a new show, I'll have you back on. Definitely. Yeah. And then no next doubt. time I'm going to come and rehearse with you before we jam. Okay? <laughs> yeah, right. <That's> <laughs> so it's all good. Yeah. But everybody, Blackboard Horizon. <laughs> yeah. All right. What can I say? It's about that time uh, to say goodbye in, uh, to a decade of uh, late night Yo, madness no. and... Uh, just a lot of fun, a lot of my identity. So I'm not going nowhere. It's just going to take a break and uh, take care of myself. Because if you can't take care of yourself, you can't take care of nobody. So and uh, I need a break. But you know what? I love everybody. And uh, even the haters, I love you guys. You guys are the best. Uh, we like to thank definitely Nucci's Restaurant. Nucci's Restaurant has been supporting our show with free catering for the last nine years. Paulie, let's go. Just like staff members, they come and go. We had we had people that were giving a, you know donating food to the show, and uh, Paulie, he's just a gentleman, and uh, he gives back. You know, there's people that that make it in life, and then they give back, and Paulie's one of those that give back, and and I really appreciate that. Paulie, you're part of the family, and uh, hope you sign on for the next show, which I'm sure you will. But uh, follow me on my uh, website, JohnnyPTV.com. We got three YouTube channels. Just Google Late Night with Johnny P and uh, let you know what kind of madness I'm going to be up to. But I'm just going to be uh, taking a little break for a little while, but I'm not going to be going anywhere. But uh, that's it. Thank you for coming. Good night. Yeah.
dismissal My name should be trouble. Dismissal.